Hi everyone, welcome to another Lab Train Me video. My name is Effie Melissa and I am the head of field and lab operations at Omicron and today we are, going to, we are going to be taking a tour of a holotype HLA lab. So we will be describing how the workflow works and how you can set up your own lab to do it efficiently. So we are going to be starting with a little bit of an introduction of the actual workflow. In the first stop of the workflow, we will be starting with the genomic DNA preparation and master mix preparation in order to set up the class 1 and class 2 HLA long-range PCR amplifications in the step 2. Then after the amplification is done, in step 3, we will be quantitating the amplicons and normalizing them to about the same concentration in order to pull all of the loci per sample together. After that, we are going to be doing an exosub purification on those PCR products before we go into the whole library preparation uh, in step 4, which, which can be broken down to fragmentation and repair and adenylation and adapter ligation before we pull all of those ligated libraries into a final pool together. Once we have the final pool, we will be size selecting that library using the peeping prep in step 5 and then we will be quantitating the size selected library in step 6 using either a qubit or a qPCR. Finally, we will be loading the MySeq on step 7 for the sequencing reactions to take place and when those are done and our files are generated, we will be analyzing all of the data in step 8 using HLA twin in order to get our HLA genotypes. So for the first step, we are going to be preparing our genomic DNAs and the master mixes to set up the long-range PCR amplifications. For this step, we will need our DNAs. We will also need our locus-specific primers for all of the HLA loci that we will be interrogating. And we have uh, primer-specific mixes for HLA A, B, C, DRB1, DRB3, DRB4, DRB5, DQ alpha 1, DQ beta 1, DP alpha 1 and DP beta 1 and all of the reagents that are needed for them as well as, as, well as all of the long range PCR uh, reagents that we need for the master mixes that come from the Kyogen long range PCR kit. From the Kyogen long range PCR kit we use the buffer, we use the, uh, the DNTPs, the water if needed, and the long-range PCR enzyme. Uh, during this step, we will, we will be preparing our amplification plate for all of the loci that we will be interrogating. During step one, we will begin, we will begin by preparing the genomic DNA and the master mixes that we need for the long-range PCR amplification of all of the HLA loci that we will be interrogating. We will be needing DNAs and we will also be needing the HLA specific primer mixes that come in the holotype kit. We will also be using the Kyogen long range PCR kit that contains all of the reagents that are needed for the PCR amplification. During this step, we will be preparing amplification plates that will hold all of the reaction mixes that we need uh, for the loci that we are interrogating. So now that we have our amplification plates ready containing both class 1 and class 2 HLA loci and all of the uh, ingredients that are needed for the amplifications, we are ready to go put them into the PCR machines for the amplification reactions to take place. We have 296 coil plates that are our amplification plates and we go. Hello, us. And this is our PCR room. This is where we have all of the PCR machines separately from the PCR sta pre-PCR station that we are using for setting up the reactions. Class 1 loci go into a separate PCR machine than class 2 loci because they have different amplification programs as all reactions have been optimized in order to achieve the best possible amplification of all HLA loci and corresponding alleles. In step 3 of the workflow, we will be normalizing all of the amplicons for the HLA loci using the Quantifluor double stranded DNA system by Promenda. You can actually exchange this with any other uh, double stranded DNA fluorescent dye, such as cypher green or pico green, anything will work, it's the same chlorophyll. So in this kit, we actually have the, the, the dye itself, the Quantifluor dye, which is orange, very pretty color. 
It also comes with a DNA standard that we use in a serial dilution to create a standard curve, as well as one X key buffer that we will use to dilute all of our amplicons. We can do this step using either a plate fluorometer or a qPCR machine for efficiency. We avoid using qubit or any single tube uh, fluorometer just because it takes a very long time to quantitate all of the amplicons one by one. So to make this a very efficient way, we use a plate format. So all we have to do is dilute our, uh, our amplicons in one XD buffer, add the dye, and then put them into the qPCR machine in this particular case that we have in our lab. After quantitating our amplicons, we want to normalize them all to about the same concentration because at this point we will be pulling all of the loci per sample together. So while before we started with multiple amplification plates for every HLA locus separately, at this point we are consolidating everything down to much fewer wells. So this makes the whole process moving forward much easier. Now that we have finished with our pooling, all we have to do is do the exosub PCR purification in order to remove all of the unused PCR reagents uh, from the previous step and move towards the next step, which will be the library preparation. Next step, we will be talking soon. In step four, we are going to be doing the library preparation. During this step, we have, starting from this step rather, we have all of our pooled applicants together. So we are working with only a, a, a small amount of tubes. Um, the library preparation consists of three enzymatic steps. We have fragmentation, then any parent and annihilation in one reaction, and then the adapter ligation in the third reaction. There are no cleanup steps in between. We only use a PCR machine where we put the, the reactions in in order to take place. The important thing for the fragmentation reactions is to set them up on ice. That is the most important thing in the whole, in the whole process. First, the reactions can be set up just on your bench without a problem. For these steps, all three enzymatic steps, we use the buffers and, the, and enzymes that come in the holotype kit. In the holotype kit, we have the library preparation component kit that contains all of these tubes that are actually color-coded to make it very easy to find. The last step in the library preparation process, as we mentioned already, is the adapter ligation. For this purpose, we actually have an adapter plate that contains pre aliquoted uh, index adapters in all of the corresponding webs. Each well contains a unique index adapter, so it's very important to keep this separate and not cross contaminated. As I always say, try not to cross contaminate the universe. The important thing is to transfer one sample from your reaction plate into the adapter plate and then after the adapter, lig the adapter ligation reaction is over, all you have to do is pull all of the ligated, um, all of the ligated libraries into one low bind tube, at which point we will be purifying and concentrating that pool using unpure XP beads. They're magnetic beads that will just concentrate the library. The next step is step 5. This is the library, the pooled library size selection. We do size selection using the pipping prep machine. It's an automated way to, make, to do size selection which is very specific, very easy and completely walk away. You load your library and you go away. The run takes about 45 minutes and then you have in the end the size selected library. For this purpose, we use the 1.5% agarose dye free cassettes and the marker K corresponding reagents. We load the entire amount of library into the pipi prep and then we get the entire size selected amount out of it later on. So one of the last steps of the whole preparation is the library quantitation. This is step six. During this step, we want to measure the concentration of our final size selected library. We always keep our library on ice. It's very, very important to keep that on ice from any step forward. You can use the library quantitation using two different, two different machines. It's entirely up to you and what is your preference. You can use either a QPCR machine and the Kappa Biosystems library quantitation kit specific for the, with the Illumina specific uh, primers in it. Or you can use a qubit with the qubit, assay, the qubit broad range assay. Either one is perfectly fine for this purpose. And now that we have quantitated our library, we are finally ready to load the MySeq, which is pretty much the last step in the whole process.
So the very last step in the whole workflow is to finally load the MySeq. In order to load the MySeq, we just follow all of the standard recommendations by Lumina. You can use any kind of, uh, any flow cell size and any chemistry that is supported by your machine, um, according to the number of samples and loss height that you're running in your library. The end time varies, but for, a, for 24 samples, 11 loss height, you can expect to run them on a micro flow cell of 300 cycles, which takes about 17 hours. So in less than a day, you will have some data to review. And that brings us to the very last step. And here we are a day later when all of our data has been generated from the MySeq, from the sequencing run that we started yesterday. So now all we have to do is analyze this data with HLA Twin. And that means that we just initial, initi initiate the analysis in HLA Twin of every sample, review the data and report it. And then we are done. So we have gone over the whole workflow of holotype HLA and we have discussed every step separately. One last thing that I would like to mention is that the entire workflow, the entire protocol is so simple that it can be automated on a number of different liquid handlers. So if you would like to, to learn more about automation, both for pre and post PCR steps, just feel free to contact us either at supportatomicson.com or salesatomicson.com. And of course, if you have any other questions, we are here to answer those as well. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.